Let's go to Adrian calling from Florida. Welcome to the program, Adrian. Well, thank you, Sam. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing quite well. I understand you were looking for someone to defend libertarian positions, and uh, here I am. I'm ready to go. All right, great. And uh, you are the ch- are you the chairman of the Libertarian Party of Florida? That's correct. Oh, great. Well, you know, I'm I'm curious as to um, your theory uh, as to uh, th- this so-called free market uh, that we're supposed to have. Uh, why do you okay. think there is a free market? Uh, well, there, that's part of the problem. There currently isn't a free market. Is there a free market uh, anywhere in the have, world? Um, <clears throat> not on a uh, a national scale or even a a state. Um, a free market. Uh, let me just best, ask you this. Let me give you one more question. And then you can, extremely small scale. Uh, has there ever been one in the history of the world? Oh, I'm, I'm sure there have. Uh, but uh, aside from going into a history lesson, I think it's well, important that the listeners once? understand what we have today. Well, I, I guess my uh, whole can point. Can I cite what one? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Can you cite one? I mean, just historically speaking, because my problem with it is I think this notion of a free market is a fantasy. And why do you think that? Because there does there isn't one that exists on a national scale, as you've said, and the chairman okay. of the Florida Libertarian Party can't even cite one that's ever been. Well, let me ask you this. Has there ever existed peace throughout the planet on Earth? Has there ever existed peace throughout the plan uh, in the entire planet? No. Yeah. No. Have, have we ever, as 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 a species, have we ever experienced a period of peace where all people were at peace? As a there species, there has not been, correct. No. In certain societies, okay, yes. Therefore, in societies, yes. Is it a fantasy? Is it a fantasy to say that we should not strive for peace, global peace? Because it's never existed. Well, here's the problem with that. And I, it's an interesting uh, analogy, but I actually believe that there is a fundamental difference between all out war and a small amount of war. And in terms of, in other words, the less war we have, the better. The notion of so a free market, but the, no, the, the notion of a free market is a binary choice. In other words. Okay. So you know, in that case, you're, you're very Republican in your philosophy that some wars are good wars. No, well, listen, I don't think that some wars are good wars. I think that certain amount of war is, seems to be inevitable based well, upon the entirety wars. of human history. Well, you did say small wars are okay. No, no, I didn't say small wars. You didn't war. like big wars. No, I said, I said small war is better than large war. Okay. So it's a lesser evil that you're willing to, to live with, correct? Well, it's not a question of willing to live with. I think there's a certain inevitability, but I would prefer always the lesser evil, yes. Okay, fair enough. Now let's go back to your original question, which was, has there ever existed uh, periods of true free market? Yeah, within a state. Uh, within, a, country, within a state, yeah. Yeah, let, let, and let's go back through U.S. history. Um, maybe not perfect free markets, but we have come very close. In fact, uh, through most of this country's early history, uh, we did have a free market, and that free market is what enabled us to become the world's richest economy. It wasn't until we really started transferring from free market capitalism to uh, a, a form of crony capitalism and corporatism uh, with undertones of um, ba- basically elements of both socialism and fascism in the early 20th century, that um, we started to reverse that trend. So, so the answer is so early 20th very century. Let me just get a get around market. when we were talking about like what what when did we when did All we right. make that move? Um, well, it was it was over a, a significant period of time, but I would say that the final nails in the coffin in the free market uh, were about the, the period from uh, 1912 to, say, uh, 19, late 1930s. 
so, uh, during the period of the go ahead. So when we had things like child labor laws, 40 hour work week, when we had things like social security. No, 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 not necessarily that. What, no, what was not it? necessarily that. What policies? I don't, what it was was the creation of the Federal Reserve System, uh, whereby the bankers had control of the monetary system instead of the United States Treasury. Uh, the creation of a variety of um, you know massive social programs via the New Deal. Okay, um, so social things security. Of that nature, which were, well, so with these massive programs, yeah. social security, uh, the uh, the WPA. Um, these these programs that the creation of, of the yeah the, the creation of the Sixteenth Amendment uh, the the uh, beginnings of taxation on income and wages mm -hmm. those sort of things you have to remember that through the majority of our nation's history uh, we didn't have any form of income tax whatsoever yes no I know well not, not, I don't know quite uh, we're quite at the majority but nearly close yes I think it was what nineteen uh, yeah. seventeen. Uh, so, so Correct. you are pining back for so those days. So less than hundred years, we've had an income tax. You're pining, mm -hmm. you're pining for those days uh, back uh, when we had incredible poverty Sam, rates. I know where you're going to go here, and, and no, let me let me just say it's not the libertarian position that we want to have uh, slave labor and child labor and things of that nature. That's absolutely ridiculous, and I'm going to reject that flat out on a premise. What I'm saying is libertarians look for a market economy that is not controlled by government and a monetary system that is not controlled by the global mega-corporate banks. Well, look, That's what libertarians look for. Uh, there has never been a market in this country that was not controlled uh, by the government. The government uh, enforces contracts. It, it it provides for uh, you back in that time before you had uh, the the rise of unions. It was uh, government goons that came out and um, were uh, beating people with baseball bats uh, when it came time to any type of uh, uh, disputes between the, these companies. It was the government that uh, provided these contracts for uh, railroads that went across the country. Um, it was the government oh, that supported right. all you know, sort of all sorts of, of aspects of society that allowed for the uh, the accrual of wealth. In addition to slavery, uh, which government you know you could make a very good case that a lot of our uh, success, at least parts of this country economically, were a function of the fact that they had really, really super cheap labor, and uh, that they didn't have to pay them; they just owned them. Uh, so this 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 well, wonderful me, period that you're talking about with free me, market, there's let no. Me tear, let me tear down. I would argue that that's not a free market. Your argument right there. Uh, no, no, that's not a free market. I absolutely agree with you. In fact, no libertarian uh, would ever agree. See, to understand libertarian, well, then let's you go have back to, to my premise. Groups. It wasn't a free market. It didn't exist in this country. It cannot oh, no, exist. No, 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 no. Wait a second. I, I'm. You you thrown a lot out there. Let me address it point by point. All right. The first point is that you said government was always interfering because they enforced contracts and enforced the law. That's what government should do. If there is a dispute between people in the free market, then we have a court system to deal with those disputes. That is a real function of government. And, you know, arbitrating disputes is something the libertarians want government to do. That's one of the, the things why government should exist. That's not saying... But you don't mind... You know, wait, wait, you, but it's not just arbitrating d disputes. It's also using the monopoly of force to enforce those dis uh, those resolutions. Right? I mean, don't libertarians not want a monopoly of force? Well, no. What we don't want is we do not believe in the initiation of force. Now, if someone has committed fraud against you... They have initiated force. Well, why and for is it you fraud? to ask why the government fraud? to I mean, remedy... Breaking a contract? Well, is that, is is that fraud? fraud? I mean, people break contracts all the time. It, people have honest disputes Well, wait a second. An honest dispute is one thing, but I'm talking about fraud. Well, fraud is a form of force, if, if you think about it. Fraud is what? It is the taking of someone else's 
property without, um, you know, through means of theft. So, by definition, fraud, if you accept that, that, that uh, theft is a form of force, then, yeah, fraud is the initiation of force. So I've never heard of anybody to refer remedy, to theft as a form of thor force, but okay, so in that case, we don't have a situation in this country right now where the government has uh, a monopoly of power. Is that correct or wrong? Oh, no, they do. But here's now, let oh, wait, me go to the wait. second I can point practice of fraud. Here's where so I must have force, too. And you can practice fraud, so you must have force, too. I mean, the reason why we're all turning into pretzels understand. here is because you're trying to prove something that is not possible to prove. There is no free market. It doesn't exist. And when you decide to roll I it back agree, agree to pursue... There, no, but there's never exist. It doesn't exist in nature. It doesn't exist as a fantasy land. And when you try and pursue it, inevitably what you do is simply provide the power for the wealthiest or the strongest in our society. That's all. And that's the problem I have with your vision okay. of, uh, and, and we can see this, and we know this because in the time that you cite, which was free of government interference in your mind, or more or, or free of government interference, it was based upon the subjugation of a huge portion of our uh, population, whether it was black people or women or immigrants. Uh, it was based upon the subjugation of people based upon wealth. It was based upon uh, the subjugation of people based upon their age. Uh, it was based upon uh, a whole raft of subjugations because that's where government power extended to, only to protect those with the, the means uh, of which to uh, control the, the government. And so when you start to see the emancipation of people, uh, when you start to see the government functioning to provide for the entire society, that's when, in your mind, it has become, uh, the government has become corrupt. It's completely arbitrary, and it's simply based upon what you think is there. And that's why you speak disparagingly of the amendment, uh, of, of, of uh, amendments to the Constitution that you don't appreciate. Uh, that's why you refer only uh -huh. to the protection of property as opposed to the pursuit of happiness. Uh, that's the problem I have with liber uh, oh, no, libertarianism. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, wait a second. Now you're, you're putting words in my mouth, and you're completely misinterpreting my position. Oh, now, okay, the pursuit of happiness is an incredibly fundamental right. Libertarians believe that all people have the right and, and the freedom to do whatever they choose, so long as they don't infringe, infringe upon the rights of another. But going back uh, to your, your, let's say, on economic point here, all right? Going back to your economic point, we had, and granted, it wasn't perfect. No economic system is going to be perfect. Yes, it but was really it. not perfect if you were um, a, uh, a person who wasn't really wealthy. Uh, Two-thirds of seniors were living in poverty before uh, the socialism that you call Social Security came in. For okay, instance. now let me ask you this today. How many seniors are living in poverty? How many? A lot um, less. How a many? Lot, a significantly oh. less portion of seniors live in poverty now. In fact, uh, it's actually. But well, what's the opposite? Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and give me the figures. If you were to cut, uh, I've just saw. Uh, I've seen studies recently that if you were to cut uh, Social Security by even ten percent, you would increase poverty by three million people. I mean, we have okay. fifty percent of Americans. Over 50% of Americans rely on Social Security uh, up to 60% in, uh, 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 in their retirement for their income. You cut that, you get okay. rid of it, and they are living well below poverty. Now, let me explain to you the unintended consequence on the backside of that. Before Social Security and before income taxes, there could be one... Um, person who held a job in a household that provided not only for all the needs of that household, but also allowed for savings and for a step up for future generations. Today, because of the enormous burden on current workers of these massive social programs that do have some benefit to seniors, now we have 
the average American household, we have two people working to achieve the same thing that used to require only one person working, considerably less savings, and a much higher likelihood that our next generation is not going to be as well off financially as the prior generation. Adrian, now, the notion, great, hold on for one second. We've reduced hold, on, the, hold on for one second. Go ahead. All right. Yes, there, I'm sure there were households where one person was taking care of everybody in the household. But the fact of the matter is that poverty has decreased substantially. I mean, we're talking by, by, uh, we're talking by quarters of the population. We could be talking multiple quarters of the population uh, relative to uh, the early uh, 20th century. Substantially. And we have, we have, we have lengthened like people's the, lives. Well, people like are healthier. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that the idea that Social Security has, caused, has been a, a burden on workers is absolutely ridiculous. It's completely unfounded. The fact of the matter is, is that... How so? Well, because... Wait a second, wait a second. I reject that on a premise. When something costs me 10% of my income, it is a burden on me. Well, Social Security costs you uh, 6%, and that's, that's before even the moratorium uh, Fair that's enough. costing you 3% 6%. now. But, 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 that's, but, but what it does is it means that you, and I may not necessarily you, I don't know your specific circumstance, well, actually, wait a second. you're not before, going to have to keep to your parents figure. from living in a flop house. You're not going to have to uh, sell your house to pay for their medical bills because we have Medicare, we have Social Security. <laughs> Sam, don't you understand that we are on a path to total economic destruction? All these government programs are Ponzi schemes. They are relying on future workers to pay for current recipients of benefits. Yes, and do you understand All that a Ponzi, Ponzi scheme, for it to be a Ponzi payout. scheme, there would have to be no workers that we anticipate in the future. No, you need to look at the definition of Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme, by definition, is paying benefits to current recipients based on the Look, uh, I don't want to get a semantics argument with you, but the fact is, the is that at one point in a Ponzi scheme, the reason why Ponzi schemes are Ponzi schemes is because at one point you run out of people to pay into the system. We're not running out of people to pay Hang into up. the system. Really? So, so what you're telling me is that Old people aren't living longer, therefore relying on benefits longer, and we have less and less as a percentage of I am people going you, into the labor force. I am telling you, uh, Adrian, that this is a math problem that we are, we are talking about now. And if you want to see the math, okay. go to the Social Security trustees. And the math as it stands right now is that Social Security is fully funded until 2037. And then after that, we'll continue to pay out 78% of benefits until you and I are well, well past being dust. And the reason why it's only going to be down, okay. that it's that it's going to cut 22% of promised benefits is because because of the income disparity in this country right now we are capturing less than the typical 90% of income through uh, taxation. If we were to right. raise if we were to raise the the cap on Social Security to somewhere around $170,000 or for all that matter lift it totally. Uh, Social Security would be completely funded until uh, our grandkids are dust. But you don't understand that as increased productivity, more people are paying into the system. It doesn't matter what this uh, worker uh, ratio is. This is a math problem. Wait, 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 and the wait, math wait, 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 is wait, wait, done. It's completely wait, 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 transparent. How does... Wait a second. You, you're, you, you've got definitions of words here that are completely counterintuitive and, and contrary to what the real definition means. Like By what? definition, productivity means achieving more with less workers or less, uh, you know, hours per worker. So how does increased productivity mean more money for Social Security? There's more income. There's more money. How is there more income? Who? Where's the money coming from? Increased productivity. Productivity means Look, workers. Look, Adrian, this is a math problem. This is a math problem. Less. This is an equation. You're arguing to me that two plus two is yeah, not four. And, and I'm telling you, go to the Social Security Trust no, Administration not. website. They have three different scenarios based upon three different sets of assumptions as to what the economy will do. One is a very desperate uh, scenario. One is a moderate uh, scenario. And one is an optimistic growth. And the one that they use is the one in the middle. 
projecting a 2.5, 2.7% growth over the next 50, 75 years. And that's, those are the numbers. We know how many people are born. Wait, wait, we know many, how many workers there are. We know in 1983 when um, uh, Reagan raised the uh, Social Security taxes, they did that because they anticipated a glut of workers because of the baby boom. They knew this back in 1940 when all these people were born. This is all knowable. So what you're talking about is a made-up okay, fictional so story about Social Security that somehow, because we have Social Security, that's why we have to work harder. That's ridiculous. It's saving us. It's saving people okay. from poverty when they're older. It's saving current workers from having to pay for their parents. And, and all of this is noble, and you're just talking a fiction because you, you can't go back to the original premise, which is name me a situation where the free market has existed. It can't exist. Government always intervenes in markets. By definition, markets don't exist without governments. And so government sets up the market. And the question that you and I are debating wait, wait, is who wait, wait, should wait, wait. that market serve? Wait, wait, wait. And I think it should serve the how vast do, majority how of people do, how do, who do. think that's communism or socialism, or we've lost some, some ethereal, okay, ephemeral once again, notion Sam, of liberty. You're putting words in my mouth. You're putting words in my mouth. Please stop doing that. Okay. How do, mar how can markets not exist without government? How do governments create markets? They set Explain up the that context. You just said that. They set up the context in which people uh, contracts are enforced, in which um, uh, trade can take place. They set up the currencies. They set up all the rules that okay, govern the second. market. And those rules can be helpful. I mean, listen, if we, we play a uh, football game... Well, wait a, a second, wait a second, wait a second. No, 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 no. See, your, your, your premise is completely wrong there. Markets exist inherently. Markets have well, existed this is where we disagree. before there, is there was no, even a thought of government. No, there is no, no there. evidence is of what you're referring to whatsoever. There is no anthropological evidence that markets predate oh, any of type of government or state, I should say. Oh, of course there is. Cite one. Oh, come on. Cite one. How, uh, cite S one? Cite okay. one. Um, how about I have a, uh, uh, a yard full of chickens. My neighbor has a cow. I want to charge uh, trade my neighbor uh, his cow for my 10 chickens. How does a government need to exist? Now, that is a transaction. That's a wonderful that story. But that is just a fiction. Read David Graeber's book on debt. How is Anthropologically, that Anthropologically, there is I'm no... Not read any there is here. no... There is no... Ex there is no examples in the history of man of what you're referring to, this notion of a barter economy, it doesn't exist. Are there instances where people barter? Wait yes. A is there a market, a barter economy? No, it has never existed. Not before the existence of a government okay. and based in, or a state, I should say, and basing it on, uh, uh, on currencies. Barter as a system has never existed. Oh, you're out of your mind. Barter predates currency. No, that's not true. There's no evidence okay. of that. Let's go back. All right, let's well, see. This let's, is this is where. Again, listen, I'll tell you what, Adrian. Adrian, Adrian, no, Adrian no, this no, 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 no. Huh. This is where we're going to end because I'll tell you why. Because w I know that I can cite anthropological evidence that what you just said is. Wrong. I will right now. North American, Native Americans bartered items, there was no government whatsoever, and that worked for uh, a few thousand years. That, th There's your anthropological when tribes evidence met, right there. When tribes met, there was some exchange of goods. But it wasn't a barter economy. It wasn't, I need a cow, and we, as a tribe, have ten chickens. That's not the way it worked. Why is that not a, that's not that the not way a barter economy? That's because that's not... A, it's I, not so, an economy. Because, so what B, your premise is, it's is not is the way that, that it works. There is no government in that scenario. It can't possibly be an economy, it's which not, is a, it's, a flawed premise. All right. Adrian, um, we can continue this, but I got to jump because I got other callers. But um, hey, by call the way, back. I just I, want to Please, say I want to invite you. arguing with you. Adrian, I, I, I feel <laughs> the same way. I want you to call back, and you should go and find, to me, a not a story, but a, an instance where there's been an organized economy, a market, a market, not instances of trade, a market where, the, uh, where barter has predated currency in a uh, specific society or whatnot. And I will uh, go back I'll and I'll have citations for you and then we can meet for you again. next time. Okay, great. I appreciate it. Sounds great, Sam. Thanks to the call. Take care. Aaron.